You know, Watson, the opulent mansions and stifling heat remind me of my time in the Mediterranean. Cordona does sound rather magical. Do you think you shall ever return? I... I don't know. That place was home to some of my greatest memories and... some of my lowest moments. Could you help me? I'm bone tired, but yeah, I'll help you. Lord, help me. Excuse me, miss. Are you all right? What is your name? Eula, sir. Waiting for someone, Eula? Y uh, yes, sir. My brother Davy. He works for Mr. Arneson in that mansion yonder. <laughs> Been five days now since I last heard from him. Come now, why all the tears? Something happened to Davy. <gasps> I feel it in my bones. Do you think he may have left the premises? No, sir. Davy, he ain't like you and me. He's smart in some ways, but he can't talk. Not a word. He's he's pure. He ain't kind. Fear not. We will look for your brother. One presumes this gate is locked. Is there any other way inside? There's another entrance through the stables you could try. That's where I meet Davy normally, but I, I couldn't get in. See, I couldn't find the key. It wasn't in its usual spot. Please hurry, sir. Find him for me. Please, Lord, protect my brother. I rather wish my lockpicks had not been lost in the river. Along with all our clothes, books, teeth. This must be the key to the stables. Poor animal has been suffering for days. It's dehydrated. Clothes. Without water, it will die. Mr. Arneson's cab is still here. Cayenne pepper. Half empty. Or as Watson would say, half full.
luxurious shoes size 9. These fingers were severed with a single clean stroke, but I don't see the thumb or middle finger. Look, Watson. Animal prints. I wonder what kind. Boots. Size 10. A scrap of silk, soft and elegant. No sign of a boat. Size 10, the owner's footprints were shallow. Size 10, the heels are sinking into the ground. Look here, Doctor. Two sets of footprints left by the same person, yet they vary in depth. What do you conclude? Hmm. Perhaps they arrived empty-handed, but left carrying something heavy. Precisely. We'll make a detective of you yet, Watson. There's blood here. Smell that, Holmes? Something bad happened here. I know. Be prepared for anything. few drops of blood, but not from a mortal wound. Watson, would you please lend me your medical expertise? I'll do my best. A deep stab reached the man's heart. Clean edges suggest a sharp blade, but the wound is too wide for an ordinary knife. The hand can bend freely. Rigor mortis has passed. Hay on his trousers suggests a gardener or groom. His corneas are already clouded. This man has been dead for a week. The result of a sharp object piercing his heart. You are mostly right. But I would bet he died five days ago. Heat and humidity will have accelerated the decomposition. Mr. Arneson with his prey. Someone was bleeding, but it doesn't look lethal. Burnt papers, now completely unreadable. The bent end of this candlestick has blood on it. The 
candle was burning when it fell. A trail of wax leads to the door. Someone smaller walked over these boot prints. I will need your help one more time, Doctor. An enormous blow shattered her ribcage. Blooded, broken nails. The poor woman tried to put up a fight. Extremely sharp and deadly. A wound like this could only be dealt by a man of incredible strength. And cruelty. Why does it look so familiar? <laughs> Tea for two. An odd glimpse of normalcy amid the horror. used kitchen towel. Note the blade, Watson. A curved dagger, probably of Persian or Indian origin. Nine or ten inches, I'd say. Arneson and Davy seem to have got along well. He looks more like a son than a servant. Arneson and Davy, 1881. Corner of Louisiana. Full of things that bite, no doubt. New Pied Piper. Foreigners missing in New Orleans. What I wouldn't give for a nice bath right now, Holmes.
A dull book about local geology. Even I'd struggle. The dashing portrait of Mr. Arneson. An intruder entered through the back door at night, leaving mud traces in the hallway. Without being noticed, they picked up a candlestick and struck the man in the chair from behind. In the kitchen, two people were drinking tea, the workman and cook. They were startled by the noise of a falling body and went to investigate the parlor. The workman tried to subdue the intruder, but was stabbed by the attacker's knife. Judging by the wound, it was a curved blade. The cook panicked and fled back to the kitchen. The intruder followed, but since their blade was stuck in the workman, they used the meat cleaver on the table to kill her. Someone smaller arrived and discovered the carnage. They dropped the candlestick in horror and ran for safety to a room down the hallway. Meanwhile, the intruder returned to his first victim and dragged their stunned body away from the fireplace and out into the garden. Davy, please open the door. After all this, Holmes, I doubt the young man would open the door to a stranger.
Yeah. So quick. Get to the door. Poor Eula requires medical examination. Be swift, Watson. Look at your marks on her neck. There'll be a bruise, but she should be okay. <laughs> Doctor? Watson, speak to me. How is she? We were just in time, Holmes. Eula is stable, but lucky to be alive. We should take her to a hospital for a further examination. Yes. I fear I was wrong, Watson. The Sheriff is not a man to be underestimated. To lynch an innocent woman just to send a message, it's evil. We're not safe in this city, nor is anyone around us. Then we must not dawdle. Help me get Eula to her feet. No, no. I will not leave here without Davy. Miss, please, we must get you help. No, I will not be deterred. I will get my brother and bring him home. If my deductions are correct, Davy lies behind this door. He ought to be unhurt, but is no doubt shaken. Davy? Davy, you there? Davy? We understand what you witnessed before. It's safe now. You're safe. Please, let us in. Your sister wants to see you. Everything will be all right, I promise. Yeah, them gentlemen speak the truth. Just, just open the door. Big sister's here for you. Davy, oh, come here, you. Thanks, sirs. Lord bless your souls. Let me examine him, miss. I want to make sure he is unharmed. Remember, he may be mute, but he still understands you. Davy seems in good health. The bruise is a remnant of that awful night, perhaps even caused by the intruder, but he is otherwise unharmed. In fact, I believe life here was good for the boy. Arneson and the others cared for Davy. That may have allowed him to withstand such horrors. I need your help, Davy. We know that the man with the curved dagger is responsible for all this. You recognized the man, yes? The same one in the photograph in the office upstairs, standing with Arneson. Good. Please, write his name. And one last thing. The room with an image of a bell on its door may hold important answers. Do you know a way in? Yes. I think I've got it. You have been very helpful, Davy. Let's take a closer look.
These should come in handy. Foreigners' clothes, by the looks of things from the Near East. <laughs> the scene is impossible, unnatural, but also familiar. <laughs> Dense and disturbing notes. It's hard to follow. Cut and polished, easy to sell. Arneson's signet ring, as we saw in his portrait. Isn't that interesting? Hello again, Lucy.
my princess, my love, my heart. Fitting words. It's almost a piece of art. Davy, we know that Ashmat is responsible for what happened here. We must catch him and hold him accountable. I know that you are scared, but you are also the only one who can help us. I believe Mr. Arneson showed you a cryptic telegram that was sent to Ashmat. You are an impressive boy with a phenomenal memory. Can you tell us the contents of that message? Thank you, Davy. Watson, please copy down everything he writes. has been suffering for days. Got a spot in mind. New Orleans port, and quickly. Innocent slaughtered, a woman lynched, a boy forever traumatized. I fear we've crossed the Rubicon, Holmes. Davy is resilient, much like Eula. We'll overcome this. You're right, but I worry this portends far worse for us. What have we got ourselves into, Holmes? Johnny boy, so how was it with champagne? Most enlightening, thank you. And now my friend Mr. Holmes would like to talk to you too. Well, ain't you something? What can I do for you? I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. How bad? It concerns your significant other, Arneson. Arneson? 
Now, who said we were lovebirds? Lucy, we only mean to help. No word of the matter shall spread. What are you implying? The man in this letter seemed ready to declare his feelings for you. Sounds like he was more than a client. It's part of the job. Men can say weird things when they think they're in love. This photo of you and Mr. Arneson suggests the feelings were reciprocated. Looking interested when with the client is part of the job, Mr. Holmes. I don't even remember the man. You mean to say you take pictures with everyone? If they ask nicely. And pay. Arneson definitely paid for a ring in your size inscribed, My princess, my love, my heart. It is for you. Arneson was going to propose marriage. Facts are clear. You know Mr. Arneson and perhaps even love him back. Regardless, he has been abducted. His life is hanging in the balance. Please, help me save him. Oh, oh my Errol! What have you gotten yourself into? I, I didn't want to believe this could happen. Lucy, Lucy, what do you know? Could it have been the sheriff? I don't know, John. This town has darkness in it. Errol and me, we had plans, dreams. We wanted to make this place better for all the folk who live here. Errol had grown suspicious of Ashmat, thought he was acting odd. He brought up the bayou. I told him to leave it all alone. The water's there. They swallow everyone. You mean the alligators? No, no, no. It's local legend. The bayou's dangerous. Any visitor that sees death messengers, they die. These messengers, are they abstract or a landmark? They're white lilies. You see a path with them flowers, you turn around. All right, Watson. We must find someone to take us to the bayou. Lucy, you have our thanks. We will go and look for Arneson. Again, and thank you. Your last tip proved extremely useful. Don't mention it, Cher. Champagne ain't one for trickery. Now, if you need more help... As it happens, we need to take a short trip through the bayou into the nearby swamp. Of course, you'd receive fair compensation. It's almost dusk, and only fools go into that swamp at night. Come back tomorrow. Champagne will take you down. That will not do. We must go now. It is of grave importance. I won't take you. But if you're crazy enough to go, I'll sell you the boat. Wouldn't you know it, I came across a bottle of your namesake. Will that be enough for a boat? It's warm. The bottle's dirty. But we got a deal. I'll even lend you this rifle. <laughs> if you're going into swamp, you'll need it. One last favor. The boat that we came on is to leave tomorrow for Europe. Would you kindly relay a message to the crew for us? We may need them to hold their departure till 8 in the morning. Of course. <laughs> 